I believe digital is at a tipping point because um, data has become, or intelligence of data has become a very important part of what we do in digital today and in the future. It's not necessarily that um, it's totally new to digital, it's actually very much what consumers always wanted, or let's say consumer-centric thinking is what was always there. People always were looking for something or people were always researching something or looking for information. And technology now has enabled us since I think 2010 to make that transparent, make the way across the web transparent and therefore the way how digital moves is the way how we have to adjust what we do. And it's actually not really new. The behavior of the people is still the same. And that's, for example, as well for social media, where everybody says, uh, yeah, because of social media, now we can interact with our consumers. Now we can understand them. It's actually not really true. The consumers were always the same. They always went to their friends for referrals, for a good restaurant, for a clothing brand or anything like that. Now technology enables us to make that transparent. And that is pretty new for us. And factoring that into our digital strategy, that's the big task right now. So understanding what your consumers actually want is doable today from a technology perspective, getting the transparency, and then adjusting the campaigns and the digital strategy we apply is actually the task we have from now onwards and what we're trying to do today for our clients. Instead of thinking in silos, um, and that has already been challenged for the last three, four years with cross-channel tracking, cross-channel attribution modeling. Um, instead of thinking in these silos of channel search, affiliation, display, email marketing, and so on and so on, we have to think, what is the problem the consumer has? And what cluster of consumers, what segment of consumers does actually want, is in which state of mind f in the procurement funnel for a product, let's say, um, somebody wants to go on a vacation. They usually research the destination first. When they have researched the destination, they're looking for a hotel. After looking for a hotel and, let's say, see me soft decide for a hotel, they will look for a flight. After they've decided for a flight, they will do a rental car. Right? So understanding that this person is right now in the mood of going on a family trip and then knowing he has just decided for a destination and a hotel is a huge value for uh, an airline, for example, or a rental car company. So instead of thinking, how can I acquire this customer through a channel like search, we need to understand when is the right momentum to find him on the web. And then we use retargeting, targeting, and the data we can collect to do that. Actually, I have seen a lot of big companies um, who are separated into a department for, let's say, traditional advertising or awareness campaigns, branding campaigns, brand communication, and a digital or, let's say, an acquisition um, department that's then called e-sales, e-commerce. They both do pretty much the same, actually. They talk to consumers and um, a CMO's job today is to combine that, to combine corporate communication as well as the acquisition. And because it's not, it's not a different target audience we are talking to, it's actually exactly the same person, just in a different momentum in his mindset for uh, trying to understand my product or wanting to find my product online or, or anywhere. So um, we even have cases, or I particularly have a case of a client in the Nordic countries where uh, the CMO actually got exchanged by a CIO and a CTO, so somebody who understands uh, innovation and technology because uh, this company saw that instead of just running advertising campaigns on TV and trying to allocate budget from print to TV and so on and so on and to digital, it is more about understanding the customer and then trying to understand how do I target this particular segment of existing customers, new customers, uh, high value customers, low value customers, uh, you have to be flexible as well. In terms of, first of all, uh, we have to see what kind of agency are we talking about. We're talking about digital agencies, right? Um, I think the time, I don't want to say the time is over speci for specialized agencies. That's not true because we know a lot of clients um, want very specific service in one specific segment. But if we look at the bigger picture, as I, as I said, a client, a customer, a consumer doesn't really care how he finds a product. He doesn't care if he has gone through Google or through Facebook or it was a recommendation or he has seen a banner or a retargeting banner somewhere. 
they basically want a problem solved. They get the job from their wives to find a nice uh, family vacation and uh, they start researching from, from asking friends to using search engines, comparison pages and so on and so on. So what does it mean for agencies? It means we have to be very flexible which channel makes sense for our clients and at what momentum does the channel make sense. First of all, the, the general behavior, the social behavior of people have not changed since the last hundreds of years. Uh, just the internet has changed the way how we can apply that. So um, I, I had a great example with a professor in, in Germany who, who told me, you know, social media explained very quickly is very easily. You sit in a restaurant and you sit in front of the menu and you want to order something. Usually, if you don't know the restaurant, a friend sitting across of you, you would ask him for a recommendation and you would trust that recommendation. But there is no one, you're alone. So who do you ask? You ask the waiter. The waiter would say, okay, the soup of the day is great. And you would think, okay, somebody recommends that, I take that. Why would I do that? He's a stranger to me. He might even want to get rid of something that is old. So basically the basic human behavior is that we trust people more than we trust uh, something that is technically created or that we can't judge on. So, um, and that is something that will, that is changing already the behavior of people on the internet because here we have that information. We trust a, a star accelerating on Google more than we trust a normal search result because somebody has said, this is a good result. The whole idea of crowding information, crowdsourcing information, uh, changes a bit the decision-making process because all of a sudden we trust people who are total strangers to us. Formerly we would never have done that. 100 years back I wouldn't have trusted someone I didn't know, right? But today we do that because the crowd is right. And um, so, so the big task is how do, we, how do we tackle that in the future? And that's also where the Google algorithm is going heavily as well as Facebook is going heavily. The whole social integration means that tomorrow I will have a search result or I will have a Facebook result or I will have even a display ad where my best friend or buddy will say, this is great for you, so I will trust it more than a general ad. And especially the digital natives, they have been overwhelmed with advertising, so they ignore a lot of advertising today. Even if people don't really understand that they can whitelist, blacklist themselves or switch it off, but they are totally uh, um, overwhelmed by all the advertising today. So they will be very, very, uh, how do you say, very, very aware of the fact that you can filter through your own context, through your own friends. And that's the whole value that, for example, Facebook and Google creates with Google Plus and with uh, uh, search integration on Facebook, for example.